Speakers. Um, Ms Clare Sugden has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Health. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should raise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary question. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Health whether the latest COVID-19 related restrictions apply to those working from and providing services at their home. And I call the Minister of Health. Um, thank you. And I thank the member for her question on, on the regulations. The restrictions exempt any person working from and providing services from their home. However, they must comply with the existing requirements to carry out a risk assessment and put suitable mitigations in place. And I call Claire Soglin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I remain disappointed that members have to seek limited opportunities to scrutinise executive statements that should be made in this chamber rather than the long gallery. I'm also disappointed that the First Minister and Deputy First Minister hasn't come to the House to respond, given that it was their statement yesterday that has caused confusion amongst the public. However, I do appreciate the attention of the Health Minister and further ask him, can we expect additional restrictions, particularly in public spaces such as the cafe and restaurants restrictions that we had heard from the British Prime Minister today? Um, I, I thank the member for her, her supplementary. Um, I'm not sure she's aware, but there, was a, a, there is an ongoing two-hour debate on the regulations already in place. And I said during that debate, I would take some questions in regards to the regulations that are being brought forward. Her point in regards to the Executive Office previously uh, heading up or, or answering these debates has been made uh, numerous times. That, that um, duty was passed to me um, last week and I was responding to the regulations. In regards to specifically what the, the British Prime Minister has said today, I'll be frank with the, minister, with the member, I haven't heard, I haven't had any acknowledgement of what he said. Uh, because I've been in the chamber all morning. But what I have said previously was if these, reg if these re regulations and restrictions do not curb the spread of COVID-19, that we will have to look to, to further measures. So I don't know what the detail of, of what has been announced for, for England, but I will make clear to the member that any restrictions that are brought forward to Northern Ireland will be brought forward by the Northern Ireland Executive through this House. And what I want to assure the member, um, and I was going to do it in, in the debate in regards to regulations, I brought forward all five regulations today, Speaker, so we could get up to date with the regulations that are currently outstanding. Um, any regulation that is brought forward has to take its due process through the Health Committee, which I'm fully supportive of, and I'll be open to this House for questions at any time, as I've always been, as I have been every day since this House has recommenced after the summer recess. I call Palm Cameron. Mr Speaker, and um, I too have been inundated with queries in regard to the, the NIY restrictions which come into effect from 6pm tonight. And given the volume of criticism uh, uh, and the talk of confusion and mixed messages, uh, Minister, um, will the Minister be looking and exploring new ways of communicating the message um, on, on a much wider countrywide basis and uh, also to explain the logic and the science behind every decision that's made? Um, um, and again, I, I thank the Deputy Chair for the committee for, for asking the question. Mr Speaker, there is uh, some sort of, um, I apologise to any member that's here and any member that was taking part in the debate of regulations because there's going to be a duplication in my answers um, to the supplementaries for this urgent oral and the, the conclusion uh, and my closing remarks uh, for the debate on regulations that will be taking place directly after. Um, this urgent oral. In regards to the communication plan, it was raised by a number of members in the debate earlier. There is an executive, uh, an executive office budget and communication plan, and there is further steps for wider communication, both social media and uh, rec um, radio, TV ads coming forward to, to emphasise these changes that have been made. I will emphasise that the changes that we have now made from six o'clock tonight across Northern Ireland were already in place across Belfast, Ballymena, BT43 and BT60 as in place last week. So these regulations aren't new. They are new to the whole of Northern Ireland as from 6pm tonight. I call Colin Gilder now. Thank you, and uh, to the Minister for coming to the Chamber to answer this important Oral, oral, oral question and uh, reflective of the, the views and concerns 
But given the new restrictions and measures that have had to be taken now, does your department plan to review or revisit the guidance around visiting in care settings, such as, in particular, such as in, in settings like maternity services and also in care homes? Chair um, of the committee for that very, very vital question. It is one that I actually just met uh, with the chief nursing officer um, between the break that we did have, and we are looking at guidance specifically um, in hospital settings. We are aware now, all too aware, of the, the restrictions that we do need to put on the hospital settings to protect uh, patients and to protect our staff as well. So that updated guidance uh, will be coming out. It will also be there for. Uh, specifically those uh, in, in maternity settings as well, because we are aware, and I've said this, I think it was an answer to, to, to Chris Little um, yesterday at question times in regards to the support that is needed um, when mothers are coming in to, to maternity units there as well. Uh, so that, that guidance will be updated and there will also be additional guidance for those care home settings as well, because we are aware of the challenges uh, of both residents and families, especially during this, this increased time when we are seeing further community transmission, that we want to ensure that visiting is able to proceed, but it proceeds safely. I call Pat Catney. Oh, Deputy Chair, my question has been answered. Sorry about that. Thank you. Pat, uh, can I call Steve Egan? Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I would just like to ask the Minister. And it's been a point that's already been raised by the, the member from uh, uh, East London Derry. I had to get that right, East London Derry. I noticed that the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister made themselves available to the media, one in the Great Hall and one outside this building less than two hours ago. Uh, does the Minister agree with me that the Executive Office has been failing in its duty to provide messaging and communications appropriately to this Assembly? In some respects, bearing in mind they've also got two junior ministers. They're being disrespectful. Um, Mr Speaker, in, in response to that and the respect to this House, I've made it clear um, in previous debates, I've made it clear in the debate this morning, that I value um, the duty of this House to scrutinise all ministers, all regulations and everything that comes forward. Um, and I've always made myself available to this House for urgent orals, for adjournment debates, for debates, for party debates, and for bringing forward these these regulations today, um, it had previously been the work of the two uh, junior ministers within TEO to take forward the regulations through this house. But I think, noting from Hansard, what the first minister actually did say uh, when she indicated to this house that the, the duty would fall back to me, she said that the the junior ministers would be um, to, to help navigate the health regulations through the house. Um, and given the pressures that no TEO is now under, uh, including um, developing the High Street Task Force and other areas, uh, the duty is now uh, to bring forward these regulations has come, come to me. I cannot shirk that duty. I cannot shirk that duty as Health Minister in regards to what the aim of these regulations is to do. And I don't think it's right to play. Um, I don't, I'll not play politics with it. I never have and I never will. Call Paula Bradshaw. Mr. Speaker, um, just following on from this morning, Minister, um, I raised the issue with the first, or Deputy First Minister yesterday around sharing de best practice around the Memorandum of Understanding. And, and I came across this. This is what they have in Dublin around the, the restrictions in it. And I'm very conscious, and as you know, I pushed from the start that we introduced sign language whenever the press briefing started. And I also think that we need very, very clear imagery around this. Not everybody can under You know, you hear a radio. And or a television, but it's very hard to digest. And I'm just wondering, can we be looking at something like this that is used right across all the websites and social media platforms? Um, can I apologise to the member? I don't have my glasses on, so I can't, I can't see the detail from here, Paula, but I'll happily take it, take it from me, because I do think um, it is vital that we make these messages as clear as possible so that everybody can understand them and we can get as much compliance across the entirety of Northern Ireland so that we set about what we aim to do, and that's about preventing the, sc the spread of coronavirus. So I'll happily take that off the, off the member at a, a later date. We call it Rachel Woods. Mr Speaker, my question has been answered. Very good. I call Jerry Carl. 
Thank you to the member for bringing it. Thanks to the Minister for his answers. Minister, considering the Tory government recently told workers to get back to work only to you turn on this in the past few hours, does the Minister share any frustration at the zigzagging you turning going on in Westminster? And given the fact that the executive at times has followed their approach on a number of occasions, is the Minister concerned that some quarters of the executive at least may be following the Westminster line too closely with little independent thinking? Um. I think I've never been accused of not having independent thinking. Um, and something being, you know, a Presbyterian from North Antrim were, were assured of our independent train of, train of thought. So I can assure the member that I don't follow uh, direct direction from, from Westminster. What I will follow is the guidance and advice that comes from our CMO and our CSA to make the right decisions for the people of Northern Ireland on every opportunity. And I think that's why the executive guidance still has been clear that those from who can work from home should still be working from home, and especially as we get into this next phase of the pandemic. Call Alex Easton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, can I ask the minister if there is a time scale in place to assess if these new measures are going to work, and if any further measures will be needed? You know, and the member makes a makes a very valid point um, in regards to two time scales. The only time scale that is critical here is the time scale of, of the virus. It will not follow um, any calendar, any rule, any regulation that we set. So what we, we always do and what we've always maintained is that we look at measures every two weeks. That's why we review our, our regulations every 28 days uh, to see if that, that two week period um, of incubation that the virus does have is, is having an effect. And I think, as I said in the debate earlier on this morning in regards to where we were actually seeing um, a decrease in those positive cases within BT43 and the Balamine area due to the measures that had been brought in over, over a week and a half ago. So, so we have evidence where the, the measures that we have introduced across the whole of Northern Ireland are applied to and are adhered to that they actually do have an, uh, have an effect. So what I would again ask, uh, ask anybody listening to this and ask anybody who wants to take a message out from this urgent oral is please uh, re-engage with that vital health messaging, you know, social distancing, good respiratory hygiene, good hand hygiene and face coverings as well. Can, call you. Um, can I draw the minister, Minister's attention to the guidance that's uh, been issued for assisted living uh, settings? And having spoken to various stakeholders over the last few days, there seems to be a bit of confusion on the part of our QIA and the PHA over the interpretation of the, the, gui the guidance. And meanwhile, meanwhile, places like Camp Hill in my constituency uh, in Kilkeel are caught in a bit of a limbo. So can I ask the Minister, will he commit to reviewing uh, the guidance, uh, taking cognizance of the fact that there's a fundamental difference between a care home setting and an assisted living setting? And the member has made, again, a valid point, as I said, I met, met with the chief nursing officer in regards, but it was specifically for care home settings and hospital settings earlier on. I'll take the member's point away and make sure that if there's any need for any clarification in future, future um, communications coming out in the change of these regulations, I'll make sure that's communicated equally. Call Mark Durgan. Good, uh, Kian Kolya, I concur with the points all our members have made about the need for clear, concise and cogent uh, messaging of what are pretty complicated on the face of it uh, regulations. Can the Minister confirm what, if any, implications these new restrictions and their introduction will have for separated parents and their arrangements for uh, access and childcare? Um, there should be no, no implications, or, or that has always been clear from, from the beginning in regards to access uh, to children um, but from, from separated partners or anything like that. Th these regulations should not be used either as an excuse to not have access or to deny access either. Call Andrew Muir. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his responses today. My clear view is that the First Minister and Deputy First Minister should be in front of this chamber today, giving us more details about that, but that issue has already been discussed. The communications around the recent regulations has been, frankly, suboptimal. I've had people on the phone to me in tears this morning, not knowing whether they're allowed into businesses or allowed into homes, whether it's essential maintenance, whether they're allowed to bubble with single person households or multiple persons households. And one of this is arising is from the fact that the NI Direct information does not mirror the legislation. Can the Minister commit to ensure that whatever is put on the website, which people are referencing, is actually mirrored in the legislation? Um, very much so, and we are, we are facilitating a further question and answer session on uh, 
topics on the NI Direct website as well to cover all, all the eventualities and a number of the questions that we have been asked, asked today following this and uh, now been expanded across Northern Ireland to provide that clarity and assurity uh, to people who were asking to follow this because I think it was Mr Sheehan referred to earlier in the, in the earlier debate this morning about that contract. We have an obligation to make sure that the contract is understood uh, so that people apply to it. So, so that work is ongoing. Will we cover every eventuality in our regulations on our guidance? I'll say no, because there are so many peculiarities when we try to do this in a measured approach uh, that allows certain freedoms in certain areas for those individuals who need it. But when we see those peculiarities being raised and addressed, we will look to, to give the correct guidance and advice to those who are seeking it. Well, Jim Allister. Thank you. Uh, if I understood the Minister's response to Ms Sugden correctly, uh, when it comes to a domestic home which is used as a and b that service can continue. Guests can still come to that house, but that person's neighbours or wider family can't come to the house. Is that correct? Um, and, and the member has referred to uh, again, and it's the utilisation of of a, of a home uh, as a business. Um, the local restrictions allow those working from home uh, to do that. Therefore, the regulations exempt any person working from providing services from their home. However, they must apply with the existence requirements to carry risk assessments and put suitable mitigations in place. So if they are using their own home uh, as a B&B &B or as that's operating as a business, those mitigations must be in place and they must take all reasonable measures to limit the risk of transmission um, of the coronavirus. Call Pat Sheehan. Thank the Minister for his answer so far. And uh, I'm, I'm just wondering if Given the deteriorating situation both north and south, has the Minister had any communications with his southern counterpart uh, in order to coordinate measures and, and restrictions? And I'm wondering if he has any plans to publicise the, the, the new daily cases per 100,000 here in the north? I thank the member. In regards to the new daily cases per 100,000, it's, it's currently published by local district area, uh, local council area, for the past seven days and the seven days prior to that. So you can see a change in trend and a change um, in incidence cases. That's available on our, our, our dashboard that's currently published. In regards to my interactions with uh, the Minister of Health in the Republic of Ireland, I think I spoke to him last about a quarter to ten last night. Uh, and the specific in regards to, I wanted to give him an indication of what we, we are uh, currently doing in these regulations and also to seek if there's any further steps that they're taking, especially consideration um, of the high incidence they're now seeing in Donegal and Louth because we're concerned and want to make sure that there is no interaction or nothing happening on either side of the border that is happening in effect. Um, the member may also be aware there's a Health North South Ministerial Council scheduled for the 2nd of October was due to take place in Armagh, but we're currently looking that meeting will proceed, but we'll make sure it's done, uh, taken into all, all, all cognizance of the regulations that we're bringing forward um, as from tonight. Orlea Flynn. Alan Gillernut. Minister, and again, thank, thank you for your answers. In relation to the, the theme that we have discussed around the confusion, can I once again highlight the issue of a very great many foreign national communities or people who have come here to work and live here who have are already struggling to keep up, who are often some of the most uh, marginalised and vulnerable in terms of the issues surrounding the... Uh, and I know you have indicated that there have been materials issued in, in some languages. I know in, in my constituency in South Tyrone there are, there are potentially, I think, 14 different languages covered, some in smaller pockets of people, but also what engagement directly with those communities can you report or can you, can you communicate directly with their community leaders to uh, expedite that communication? Um, and again, I, I thank the member, and it was something that was particularly looked at um, in regards to 
uh, an outbreak that we had in the meat processing uh, factory in regards where we are. We are aware those workers need that additional support and information, so the PHA provided uh, a number of leaflets. I, I'll check, I think it was in seven different languages, to make sure we encapsulated everyone who was working in that facility and also lived in the local area. Um, again, we are fully aware that no matter what we say in here, no matter what we put out uh, on the BBC newsletter, Belfast Telegraph, Irish News, any of that is not being picked up by by our ethnic populations who are, who are currently living in, in, in Northern Ireland. So that work has been done uh, through PHA, where that translation and guidance is being provided. Colin McGrath. And maybe as the Minister for Health, some of your departmental officials can help us with deja vu, which seems to be with you answering so many questions here over the last couple of days and no other ministers. Um, the question asks specifically here about um, the restrictions applying to those working from and providing services at home. Have you had any conversations with the Minister for Economy, given that there's going to be a great deal of many tradesmen and others out in the community that are not going to be able to go into people's homes to provide services, and that's going to leave them uh, with a loss of income in the common period? Um, I, I will say, say to the member, um, these were brought forward by the executive, so the Minister of the Economy is, is fully aware of these regulations, um, some of the restrictions that may relate to household gatherings allow building or maintenance work or the services of any trade of, or profession, but that's again taken into consideration all reasonable measures uh, to limit the risk of transmission of coronavirus and the risk assessments as well. well thank you. Uh, can, uh, can call you. Um, I have been uh, contacted by a number of uh, community organisations Inquiring of me, has the latest uh, COVID guidance have any applications for the use of uh, community halls? Um, I thank the member. In regards to, to these regulations, they're solely about re restricting household gatherings at this point in time, and that's where this focus is. Um, we may have to bring forward further regulations and restrictions in regards to, to larger social gatherings or larger sporting gatherings um, should, should time progress and should this virus progress. These regulations are being brought in now to do all that we can to prevent those social actions where we're actually seeing the spread of the virus, and that's within household settings. I hope that these restrictions have the effect that we hope they will. Um, if they don't, we will have to take further actions. Members, that concludes this item of business. Thank you all very, very much. And could members please take a raise for a moment or two?